everyone. So today we are here to talk about kipping pull-ups. So we're gonna give you guys some strength progressions to help you improve your strength so hopefully you can get your first kipping pull-up or build up and increase your stamina and your endurance in the movement. And then hopefully we can even transition that into a butterfly pull-up as we begin to gain the strength. So just like the toast of our video, I'm gonna start you with a progression that starts on the floor. We should have the strength in this progression before we ever take it to hanging from the rig. So follow me, we're gonna come down to the floor. The hollow body and the hollow arch are key to all of our gymnastic movements. So for our hollow body position, we're gonna come all the way down to the floor. We're gonna focus again. We don't want an arch in our back, but we wanna think about pulling our belly button to our spine, pointing our toes, squeezing our quads and our glutes and then lengthening from our fingers all the way through our toes actively. This is a hollow body position that we're gonna to wanna to mimic in our pull up. From there, we can flip over into our hollow arch. This is gonna be the second piece of the kipping swing. Exact same thing. Think about keeping your eyes in line so we don't wanna crank our head up. Everything's in line. We're gonna reach from our fingers to our toes and squeeze everything as tight as possible. So a good progression that I suggest for you, I like the Tabatas. So eight rounds, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. So you'll do 20 seconds of a hollow hold, then you'll flip over during the 10 seconds rest into 10, 20 seconds of a hollow arch. That would be one round, you'll go through that four rounds. So we wanna make sure that we can maintain our hollow position for 20 seconds, so belly button pull to the spine, reaching from our fingers to the toes, and then we'll flip over and we wanna be able to hold that 20 seconds, squeezing our glutes and our hamstrings, again, reaching from our fingers to our toes. So once we've mastered that Tabata, that strength progression, we can start to work our way up onto the pull-up rig. So next we're gonna talk about the active shoulder, which is crucial in our toes bar, it's crucial in our pull up, our bar muscle up, our ring muscle up, everything we do having an active shoulder is gonna protect our shoulder joint. So once we maintain the strength in our midline and our back, then we're gonna go ahead and hop up. So I'm gonna hop up. My hands are just outside of my shoulders. What I don't wanna be doing, dead hang. It's gonna be really hard to pull myself up from a dead hang because my lats are not engaged at all. So I wanna think about sliding my shoulder blades down my back creating some space between my shoulder and my ear so I have a nice long neck. So it's really good. We can Tabata hold this as well or do a reverse Tabata. So I'm holding for 10 seconds. Then I would drop down and rest for 20. Once we've mastered eight rounds of the reverse Tabata, we can go up. We can go 15 second hold, 15 second rest for eight rounds and eventually eight rounds of 20 second hold, 10 second rest. That will be challenging. So it's gonna build up some grip strength um, and get our hands used to being ready to hang on the rig because I know a lot of us complain about tender hands, but grip strength is also key and will play a part in our kipping pull up. Next, we're gonna talk about the actual kipping swing. So this is where we, we combine our hollow body, hollow hold in our hollow arch position with our active shoulder and the strength that we've built hanging from the rig. So I always like to imagine there's a line, an imaginary line that goes from post to post. So in our kipping swing, we should deviate slightly in front with our chest, and then we push back with our lats, so we come slightly behind that imaginary line. So what that's gonna look like, I'm gonna hop up, active shoulder, from here, chest comes through, push back. You'll notice, as my chest comes through, my feet go back behind. What I'm talking about there is as my chest is coming forward, my arms are on the bar, I'm mimicking my hollow arch position. So my feet are behind. Then I engage my lats, I pull down on the bar, my chest goes back, my feet come forward. So now I'm mimicking that hollow arch position. So once we've mastered the controlled swing, now we're gonna add in our hip pop. So the hip pop is key to the kipping pull up because that's where the weightless feeling comes in and then we can pull our chin up over the bar. The one major point that you don't wanna forget about the hip part is squeezing your glutes and keeping from our midline or our rib cage all the way down nice and tight. A lot of us think our swing and everything is driven from the hips, but really it's driven from squeezing our shoulder blades together and spreading our shoulder blades apart. Everything else is staying connected all the way down to our toes, nice and tight. So what it's gonna look like, I'm gonna do a little bit of a bigger swing and you're gonna see me kind of drive my hips up towards the bar slightly and squeeze my butt. So active shoulder position. So that might look a little funny, but what you'll notice is my feet 
always stay in front of me, which is going to be key to keeping our rhythm in the kipping pull up. If we let our feet kick behind too early, our rhythm's gonna be off and we're gonna be down to singles. The other piece is gonna be squeezing our butt and our quads and our midline. So to, when I do that, it's gonna continue having my momentum driving me up and back. So that way, all I have to do is pull now, engaging my lats and my upper back to get my chin up over the bar. So we've got the strength for hollow body hollow holds, we've got the active shoulder, we've got the hip pop. Now it's crucial to make sure that you have at least three to five strict pull-ups before starting to get into these kipping pull-ups. So when I say strict pull-up, that's gonna be a dead hang, active shoulder pulling our elbows down and back, which is gonna recruit our lats and recruit our upper back. So I'll just show you what one or two look like quickly. So hands are just outside of our shoulders. We wanna make sure that we can drive our elbows down and back and get our chin up over the bar. So one more time, elbows down and back, chin over the bar. When we're doing that, we're not breaking at our midline, but we're thinking about using these muscles right here in our upper back to drive those elbows down. The only difference in the kipping pull up is that we need to be strong in this vertical pulling as well as in the horizontal pulling, which is why I'm gonna give you some inverted rows and some ring rows for some strength building movements at the end of this video. So we wanna make sure in the kipping pull up, we're kind of driving up and back, and then we almost have to pull ourselves to the bar and then push back away to recreate the kipping swing. So we wanna have the strict strength to get the chin over our bar vertically, but also horizontally, and kind of combine those two movements for the best overall kipping pull up. So let's show you what a kipping pull up looks like. So we're gonna hop up, active shoulders, chest comes through, push away. So you will notice, if you go back and watch, at the top of the rep, and I'll do another one or two here in a second, I am pushing back, almost like if I was trying to bench press and get the bar off of my chest. Same idea here, so my chin has just cleared the bar, and I am pushing back to create the space, so now my chest can come back through to get the rhythmic kipping swing. The number one error that I see, which is limiting people being able to kip or causing them to have a double kip in the kipping pull up, is that they get their chin over the bar and they drop straight down. So now they have to figure out how to create the momentum to get their chest to come back forward. So I'll show you what a bad rep looks like, or this error, not necessarily bad, it's still a good rep, and then I'll show you what a couple where the pushback really helps keep my momentum in the kipping swing. So dropping straight down, it's really hard for me. Now I have to regenerate my power to get my chest to go through. Then the regular kipping swing where we push back. So I really want you to watch what happens once my chin clears the bar. You'll notice there's that slight push back. The entire time I'm staying connected from my fingers, through my toes, I'm not breaking at my hips, my shoulders, my lats are, engage are engaged and they are dictating that kipping swing. So the first drill I like to start with is a neutral grip ring row. So I'm just gonna have my palms facing in. All we're gonna do is focus on building strength in our upper back and working on our horizontal pull. We wanna make sure we set the rings to a height. I like to start with them just above my hips. Um, set them to a height that you can pull all the way to where your palms are getting to your rib cage and we're not stopping shy. So what I like to have you guys do is let's say eight to 10 reps. It should be a decent set of ring rows and then you're just gonna hold with your palms right at your rib cage until failure. Rest two minutes between or however long you need. Repeat for three rounds. So I'm gonna start with my feet underneath of the rings. I'm gonna fall back into a nice straight position. So I like to pick my toes up. Let's do my eight ring rows. We'll say that was eight, and then I'm gonna hold. Just squeezing, keeping my ribs down, so I'm not curling, I'm staying nice and tight. Holding until I have to come out or I hit failure. When I'm holding, what I'm thinking about is pulling my elbows down and back, engaging my lats in my upper back, like I'm trying to pinch a pencil between my shoulder blades. Once we've mastered the ring row and the ring row holds, or another day of the week, you could do this next piece. So I really like this. It gets us feeling with our hands, with our palms facing forward, just like we're gonna be hanging from the rig. I like to hook a barbell to the rig post. So you can, the lower you go, the harder this will be, or we can always elevate our feet, which will also make our body more parallel to the floor, which will make it harder. So I like to start with 10 reps. You wanna pick a height where you can get the barbell to touch your rib cage every single time, so we're not stopping short. So barbell set up, feet are out hollow body position, and I'm gonna pull my elbows down and back. 
Dankeschön. Äh, So I like to think about keeping my, my entire body in one straight line, straight as a board, pulling my elbows down and back, and then keeping my neck nice and long. Try not to crank your neck, but try to keep space between your shoulders and your ears. So I like to hit 10 reps with this, and then I superset with a single arm banded lat pull down, 20-ish reps per arm, smooth and controlled. So let's show you what that looks like. So for the banded lat pull down, I started with a red band. If you feel like you have super strong lats, um, you could go up to a blue band. I wouldn't use much more than that. I'd actually go for a bigger set, more time under tension than more resistance. So I'm gonna come down to my knees. Pretty good. I like to put it just on the back of my wrist, kind of grabbing up. From here, midline stays engaged. Pull my elbow down and back, slow and controlled, and squeeze. Then I'm gonna release. And squeeze. I think it's key that you get that one second pause so we know that we're slow and controlled and we can focus on engaging by driving our elbows down and back just like we're gonna be doing during the kipping pull up. I like to do 20 to 25 reps of these, superset with my 10 inverted barbell rows for three rounds total. So say you have kipping pull-ups and you're like, okay, this stuff is all great, but I wanna get more reps or bigger sets. So I think the biggest thing is gonna be just practice and practicing outside of a workout, right? So we can only do so much in a workout, but to get better, we need to just focus on quality reps and not necessarily always for time. So something I like to do is maybe once a week or after a workout, pick a skill and work on it. So say I'm comfortable with five to seven pull-ups. Um, what I would do is I'd maybe do three or four sets of five to seven in a row and try to limit my rest. So maybe 60 to 90 seconds between and try to make every set perfect. Once that five to seven reps become easy, then maybe we bump up three sets of seven to nine reps and still try to maintain our 60 to 90 second rest. And just getting quality reps outside of a workout will be a really great way for you to focus on perfect pull-ups and also increase your stamina and endurance for that movement. I hope you guys have really enjoyed this video. We love doing these tutorials for you. Uh, make sure you guys check out the toes to bar video as well. There's a lot of things that are similar, but also quite a few differences as well. Um, and we will keep these videos coming as long as you guys are liking, you're commenting, tell us what you wanna see next, and I will break down the next movement for you. Have a great day.